Please rise and face the cross here at the entrance of the church as we prepare to sing our opening hymn this morning, Your Hand, O Lord, in Days of Old. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen, we pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us kneel or be seated as we confess our sins to the Lord and receive the gift of his grace through the forgiveness of our sins. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, O oh mighty Father, Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, praise to be full of good news. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you show mercy to your people in all their troubles. Grant us always to recognize your goodness. Give thanks for your compassion and praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as you are. Great to have you here today. Special welcome to guests and visitors. Uh, we've got some sign-up sheets in the back still. A uh, blood drive, which is filling up. A lot of people have signed up online. This is great. Uh, women's retreat in uh, just a day long uh, in November. Sign up for that. And um, don't forget about Socktober. Uh, so if you can bring in uh, new socks or other uh, undergarments for men at the men's homeless shelter uh, this month. That's great. You can just leave those in the back and uh, we'll get those over there to help the men as well. And I think everything else is in your bulletin. Oh, keep in your mind uh, the last Sunday in October, which is just two weeks from now, uh, the Reformation service. For the last two years, we've had the Reformation service here. We're not having it here this year. Now it's going to be hosted by Our Savior Lutheran Church on the Alameda, which is, you know where City College High School is, close to the old Memorial Stadium, um, back, you know, back in the day, Memorial Stadium, okay? Uh, church over there at four o'clock on that Sunday. Join us if you can, it should be a, a, a great service on that afternoon.
The first reading is from um, Ruth, the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verses 1 through 19a. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man of Bethlehem and Ju Judah went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. The name of the man was Elim Elimelech, and the name of the wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Malan and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem and Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. They lived there about 10 years, and both Malan and Chilion died, so that the, the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law to return from the country of Moab, for she, had heard, for she had heard in the fields of Moab that the Lord had visited his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she was with her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to return to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go return each of you to her mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find rest, each of you in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voices and wept. And they said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters, why will you go with me? Have I yet sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. If I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and should bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out against me. Then they lifted up their voices and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. May the Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts me from you. And when Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the women said, is this Naomi? This is the word of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. Praise the Lord. I give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in him. Full of splendor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has called 
was his wondrous work to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have good understanding. His praise endures forever. The second reading comes from... 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in uh, Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier, no soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to please the one who enlisted him. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard-working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering, bound with chains as a criminal. But the word... The word of God is not bound. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go, and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. 
Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of our Lord. may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, pour out your spirit upon us. Open up our hearts and our minds. Receive what you give to share your gifts with each other and our fellowship and to bring them forth into the world through our witness. In the name of Christ, amen. Okay, so um, I think most of us are tempted throughout our lives to draw a circle. And that circle is symbolic of who is inside and who is, can you guess, outside, right? Maybe we could, maybe we could change this. Um, a little bit, instead of calling it outside, call it outcast. Okay. We've got the, those on the in and those on the out, and we're just, we're just tempted. We just go through life, and, and we've got a sense of who is in and who is out. And who is in and who is out can uh, be determined by all different things that may seem important. It can be as simple as how someone looks. You know, if they don't look right, you know, that's where they are. If they do look right, then maybe they're over there. It could be, are we still, a uh, top topic in our country today is race. We, we, races, which by the way, you know, I get interesting racial comments even here among us at times. Like, okay, racism is still, it's still, it's still around. It's still here. We still struggle uh, with these things. Culture, uh, culture, which can be race-related or not, sometimes a determining factor as to where we want people uh, to be, where we think that they may fit inside or outside. Um, it, could, it could be if we think someone is, you know, if they're stuck up, well, if they're a redneck, if they're from the hood, okay, if they're privileged, if they've got too much, if they've got too little, uh, whatever, if, if they don't speak right, if they speak too well, <laughs> you know, uh, wh whatever it may be, all, all these different things uh, help us categorize where people should fit inside or outcast. Okay. Uh, on top of all that, probably the determining factor that um, we use the most uh, is their actions, okay, their behavior. And so we'll take, you know, if, if they, we all have a tolerance for a certain level of sin, right? I mean, it, it, we, we don't freak out at every single sin that people commit. Uh, you know, someone's going, you know, two miles over the speed limit, eh, not going to bother us unless they come into my lane. <laughs> okay. or don't use that turn signal. You know, your car does have one of those. <laughs> uh, and it can be many things. We, we have a certain tolerance for certain sins, but then, then there's somewhere in there, and each of us at a different level, which shows you how subjective it is, where, where your sin crosses my line. Okay? And it's my line. I'm the, I'm the one who puts the line there. Uh, for some people, uh, it's... Um, you know, 
I don't know, in, in their relationships, how they treat their relationships. For some people, it's gossip. I can't stand gossip, lying. I can't stand lying. Uh, for, for me, probably, it's funny. So, so I realized this some time ago. Uh, for me, pride used to be this huge thing. You know, just people who are, you know, think that they know so much uh, and everything. I would struggle with, with them being on the end. And I realized and this is like a cycle in my life, often when God has me agitated at someone else's sin, it's their sin which I'm struggling with in myself. And so God has taught me so many pride lessons of late. I, oh yeah, I guess, I, I guess I'm, <laughs> I'm the one with the problem, often more so than, than the other person. It's just that they're mirroring my issue, and that's what I don't like. Which leads to, which leads to an important question then, not only you know who and why there are certain people in our spheres that are inside and others who are outcast, but, but also then the question is, where do I land? Because uh, for some of us, we feel like we land on the outcast side, that we don't fit in that we are never quite good enough, that, uh, that others seem to have life under control, that others seem to be okay, that, but, but for ourselves, whatever it is, maybe because life is just mean to us, or we can't take care of ourselves, or I just deal with worry and all this kind of stuff more than everyone else, I feel like I am outside. Or others of us feel like we're the one inside. And there are other, others who have all these issues. Inside, outcast. Where are we and where are those around us? It's an interesting question. It's, it's, it's an interesting thing that we do. It fits well with the gospel lesson today. So our gospel lesson today is a, a great gospel lesson. Hopefully you've probably heard the story before. Ten lepers, all of them healed. One, the Samaritan, comes back and thanks the Lord uh, for it. Often uh, a lesson that's used on Thanksgiving uh, Day shows up there. Uh, interesting things that are going on in this story. So uh, just um, think about first the context of what happens. We've spent, we're, we're just moving through Luke, so we're following Jesus and the disciples on their journey. And here's this real life experience but it comes after a lot of teaching that Jesus has been doing as it relates to the Pharisees and the scribes being upset that Jesus has been spending so much time with who? The outcast. The tax collectors and the who? Sinners, okay? Prostitutes and sinners, okay? And, and so there's all this fussing about Jesus spending time with them, and he's been teaching and teaching and teaching and teaching them, and then all of a sudden this real life experience happened. But even if you go back a little bit further, Luke chapter 10, a lot of this kind of started, or at least got reinforced, by a certain man who, f who came to Jesus and basically said, Jesus, what do I need to do to be on the inn? Okay. What do I need to do in order to enter the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus said, well, what do you think? He was like, yeah, I need to love the Lord God with all my heart, soul, and mind. I need to love my neighbor as, what? Myself. And Jesus said, okay, that's cool. And then what did the guy say? In order to justify himself, he said, and who is my neighbor? And then you remember the story Jesus shared with him? He shared a story about a man who was on the road to Jericho who got beat up. And as he's laying there in his blood dying, uh, a Levite comes by, a priest comes by, they do nothing, and lo and behold, someone else comes by who ends up being the hero of the story, who is the good man. And that's just the story. Now jump forward several chapters, and now we've got the real life good Samaritan. Back then when Jesus told the story, I can guarantee that a lot of the disciples are saying, that's a cool story. Would never happen, Jesus. Because <laughs> why would a Samaritan be the hero of one of our stories? 
Okay, we know, but, but thanks for the lesson. <laughs> and now all of a sudden they're here witnessing it as out of all these guys, it is but the one Samaritan who comes back. Matter of fact, I, I'd, I'd go as total guess, total guess, I wouldn't be surprised if this Samaritan in this real life story ended up living out the story that Jesus shared beforehand. That's just kind of like a, you know, God does so many cool things, I wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Nonetheless, so uh, here we are. We've got these uh, 10 guys, okay? Nine and one, nine and one. Uh, nine Jewish lepers, we're assuming, rightfully so, I think, and then one Samaritan. Uh, the nine uh, Jews are outcasts because they've got leprosy. They're told you, you can't live in the camp um, which, by the way, it, the scripture never said, you know, cut them off from society. Uh, don't count them as your brothers and sisters anymore. Why were they told to live out in the camp? So they wouldn't spread the disease. You know, it's, 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 it's really not anything more than that. Uh, but they're living as outcasts. And though normally Jews would treat Samaritans as outcasts, well, when you got a, a Samaritan suffering from leprosy and we're all suffering from leprosy, eh, what's out? Get? We're all on the out anyway, so let's do it together. And so it's interesting that we come across the nine and the one together, okay, uh, as a kind of a community of, of lepers. And uh, so here they are. Jesus comes and they, they shout out to Jesus, covering their upper lip for sure, because that was one of the Levitical rules. You know, don't let the say it don't spray it <laughs> right okay uh jesus master uh, have mercy on us or uh, another way to translate it be gracious to us or another way to translate it show your steadfast love toward us is that elios word we've talked about before uh, about your steadfast love show us your show us your steadfast love love us steadfastfully okay uh, and so Jesus just sends them off. Okay, go. Go to the priest. Go to the priest. And so um, it's funny. If they were on the inside and Jesus told them what to do, they probably would have asked why. Because <laughs> that's what people on the inside, that's what we like to do. We, we feel like we have something to say. Why? What do you want? What's going to happen? Well, you know. But they're on the outside, so they got nothing to lose. So the ten of them, they go off. They go off to the, to, to the priest. And then an interesting thing must have happened that if you're not careful, you'll miss it. Okay? So they're on the way to the priest, and they start getting better. On their way, they begin to heal. We don't know if it was one by one or just what, whatever it is. Uh, they're getting healing. Now, now you, can imagine, you can imagine what's going on as they're getting healed, that they're noticing it. And you can imagine, you know, the demeanor of the guys themselves. And they're like, wow, I mean, look, look, we're getting, wow, we're getting better. This is great. You can almost imagine some high fives. I don't know if they did high fives back then or fist bumps. Uh, maybe even some hugs, embracing, which you don't get to do as a leper. So this is, this is big, okay. Um, and, and wouldn't be surprised if there's a lot of tears coming down as well. And then an interesting thing must have happened. And I don't know who would have noticed it first, the one or the nine. Uh, if it was the one, then I could imagine them noticing something, uh, noticing it this way. Wait a second, guys. They're like, okay, what's up, man? This is so cool. I can't go with you. Why not? The priest won't see me. I'm a Samaritan. The priest won't deem me as clean. Okay? So by the way, the priests were like the doctors. They're the only ones who could say whether someone would, is clean or not. You've got to show yourself to them. They're the one who signs off on it. If they don't sign off on it, you're still on the out. But as a Samaritan, I'm dirty no matter what. 
And frankly, as you guys go back, and as you go back into your community, as you get back in, I can't go with you. Or maybe it was the nine, maybe it was the other way, where all of a sudden the guys start, you know, they're all excited and everything, they start looking at each other and like, oh, shoot. Bob over here, his name wasn't Bob. Sorry to all the Bobs. <laughs> he can't, no, you're right, I didn't think about that. Yeah, Bob, you can't come with us anymore. I mean, it's cool, we're all, look, look, it's all, we're all better, aren't we? Yay, we're, that's, that's, that's the point, Bob. The point is that, that the flesh is better, okay? Uh, so, good. We can't be friends anymore, Bob. Things have changed. We're going back in. And you're not welcome. So is it any surprise that the one Samaritan on the way to the priest, excited about returning to the community, realizes that even physically healed, he's still an outcast. And so what does he do? He turns back around to go to the one who simply never seems to have any circles to begin with. This is the Christ. There just seem to be no circles. No inside, outside. Just for God so loved the world. Uh, early Christians, early Christians would sometimes symbolically, you know, talk about the cross reaching out north, north, south, east, and west. Just embracing, em embracing all four corners of the world. Uh, for this is, this is, this is what the Christ does. Who opens up the welcome to say, where I go, you can go. Where I dwell, you can dwell. My people are your people. My God is your God. As a matter of fact, what, the way that Jesus does this is, um, see that it's not just the Jews that struggle, but they're, they're helpful in understanding that struggle that's within us. The, the, the Jewish struggle was this. They were God's chosen people. And because they were God's chosen people, they thought that they were the ones inside and the others were out. But alas, God did choose them in order that through them he might welcome and embrace all. We too, at times, you know, on the inside, we think that God, if we think we're in the inside, we think God has chosen those on the inside. That, well, they're just... God's blessing me. I maybe I'm maybe I'm doing something. Maybe I'm doing something right. <laughs> or if we feel like we're on the outside, God's chosen them. Maybe God feels like they're doing something right. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. He's not blessing me too. And we do this inside-outside thing. This chosen, unchosen, as opposed to seeing that He chooses in order. To choose all. And so when he, sends, when he sends his own son with the words, go show yourself to the priest, Jesus. Right? Isn't that kind of what the father says? Okay. He's on his way to Jerusalem here, by the way, in this story. It's, it points out, isn't it interesting? It points out in the beginning of the story, Jesus is on the way to the priest's. 
He is on his way. Only when he gets there, he who is clean, he who is pure, gets deemed by the priests as what? Outcast. And rather than welcoming him into the community, which is his people, the priests make him the sacrifice. And yet, through that sacrifice, the circle is erased. Brothers and sisters in Christ, what do our lives look like when our eyes are able to see this more clearly and our hearts are able to believe it? That there is no circle. That there is no inside outcast. That we that all are embraced. What does that look like in our attitudes to ourselves and our own struggles with guilt and shame or in our struggles with others in regard to judging, condemnation, grudges, Verse forgiveness. I'll tell you, and um, uh, Daryl, I hope you don't mind me sharing. Uh, Carol, um, uh, some of you know, uh, Carol Hastings was um, running to work this past week, and she, the way she described it, she was just doing a run, and she saw some other guy running as well, and she's like thinking how to get out of his way. She didn't know that the guy was coming to tackle her. Okay attack her looking looking for I don't know probably dope money or something uh, like that ends up breaking her hip she had surgery Tuesday she's home and 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 Daryl said she's already like doing more than she should <laughs> Carol maybe you're listening slow down for a second okay um, and I'm not saying that Carol won't revisit and struggle and, and go through this, but when, when I saw her on Wednesday, one of, the first things that, one of the first things that she says to me is that she's already forgiven him. Okay. No. She said it would be a long time before she's able to run again. It's, it's, it's life-altering. Okay. She's already forgiven him. What does it look like? What does it look like in our own lives when we don't allow a barrier where we recognize that there is no boundary between me and you no matter who you are that's why we come here week after week to be reminded that Christ the sacrifice cleanses us all Take and eat, take and drink, and in so doing, remember me that you might better remember you, that you might better remember who your neighbor is, and that there is not one who isn't. May the good Samaritan who shows up, the hero, the outcast, be used by God to erase the word outcast and to know that we are all embraced in the arms of our loving God. In the name of Christ, amen.
Let's rise to sing. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers today, we uh, continue prayers of healing for uh, Carol, for Ike Okwumabua. Uh, good to have you back healthy with us, Ike, after a little scare this week. So we pray for your continued healing also and for uh, uh, Bev Blackman's daughter, Susan, who uh, is having an infection in her foot issue. Please keep her in prayer, too. Let us pray for the Lord's mercy upon all of us and upon all people as they have need. For the word of God to be preached in truth and love, for those who hear that they may know the healing grace of Jesus and find, give thanks for his eternal embrace. Let us pray to the Lord. For caregivers and medical professionals, for hospitals and nursing facilities, and for the sick, the infirm, the aged, and the dying who receive their care, especially for those on our prayer list and whom we name out loud or in our hearts. That God may grant them patience and sustain them with his grace according to his will. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to war and violence, for those who defend us against our enemies, for those who preserve order against the threat of terror, 
and for those who sit in judgment over evildoers, that justice and peace may prevail, and we may all work together for the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For a thankful heart, that we may not forget the Lord's kindness. For a giving spirit, that we may be preserved from selfishness and jealousy. And for a new and contrite heart, that we may love God above all and love our neighbors as ourselves. Let us pray to the Lord. For the Holy Spirit and faith, that we may worthily receive the blessed food of Christ's flesh and blood in this sacrament. For true unity of faith that all may be in one doctrine and life, and that this unity would be manifest at the table of the Lord, and for the many who belong to the Lord, but are not with us here today, that we may rejoice in our oneness in Christ that transcends time and space. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who mourn for renewed memories of the saints who went before us and now rest from their labors, and for our own faithfulness, that we may one day rejoice in the Lord's presence and hear his commendation. Well done, well done, good and faithful servant. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, grant that we may with grateful hearts receive all things according to your merciful will and respond with voices of praise and thanksgiving and lives of holiness and righteousness displaying in outward form the faith that lives in our hearts. Give us faith that works in love, hope that does not disappoint, compassion that does not fail, and confidence in your mercy that does not waver, that we may live in your faith and fear all our days, and at length fall asleep in the arms of your mercy and in everlasting peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm glad our comfort dog, Kezia, is praying with us today. Thank you, Kezia. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with each other.
pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given to us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of the one who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in love for our fallen world you gave your only Son, that all those who trust in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Let us rise. Now may this body and blood strengthen and preserve you steadfast in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you of your mercy that you would strengthen us through this gift in our faith toward you and in our fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated before the benediction. We're going to have uh, Glenn Gaynor come up and just share a quick word about our campaign that we're starting. And you have a letter on that. And uh, Glenn is our chairperson for the campaign. So, all yours, Glenn. Thank you. Good morning. As you can see in the uh, worship folder, we have a commitment card and a letter. We're kicking off today the um, capital campaign. We're looking to raise $185,000 over the next couple years. Um, you can read the letter at your leisure. I don't need to go through the points. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, we've had a few um, lead donors already contribute over $42,000, so we're about a quarter of the way there to begin with. So that's great news. Um, if this letter, if you happen to lose it, we're also mailing it out. So you'll see it uh, in your mail over the next uh, week or so. Also next week in the back, we'll probably have copies as well, should you, uh, should you need it. Uh, so I'd like for you to all prayerfully consider committing to this campaign and then also returning the commitment cards by November, uh, November 10th. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to reach out to Pastor Schulteis or me, and I can help you with that, or he can help you with that. So uh, thank you. and. Uh, Let's go on to the benediction. Thanks, Tom. Let's rise again. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.